So, ladies and gentlemen, for this case, we are going back to the state of Colorado. Yes, Colorado. Another murder case in Colorado that we're looking at. I don't pick these. These are suggested by you, the viewers. So, in this case, we are looking at the Michael Blagg case. Michael Blagg, convicted of killing his wife, Jennifer, in 2004 um, sentenced to first degree um, from first degree murder and given life without the possibility of parole also convicted of um, tampering with and disposal of a human body and was doing his time in a state penitentiary and everything seemed to be good the DA was happy everyone was happy the family felt justice in this case for Jennifer but there was something that always lingered over this case. When Jennifer was murdered, her six-year-old daughter and Michael's daughter, um, Abby, disappeared. Abby has been gone and missing ever since. Her body was never found then, and no evidence of foul play was ever found involving um, the disappearance of Abby. She just vanished. She was there one day and gone. Now, in the first case and in the second case, the DA um, had argued pretty much the same thing. That Michael had gone to work or was getting ready to go to work early in the morning and blitzed Jennifer while she slept, strangling her and beating her and then uh, rolling her up into a carpet and loading her into the family minivan and then taking her to his work and dumping her in a dumpster near his work. That was pretty much the, the same synopsis that was used in the second trial. Why was there a second trial? Well, in the first case, a juror had lied on the questionnaire and purposely had omitted um, information from the um, questionnaire. And then when questioned um, later on, she admitted that she purposely left it off because it, um, to her it seemed like it would give her a better chance to sit on the actual jury. What did she lie about? She lied about that she was a victim of domestic violence. And she left it off because she felt that it, she um, heard rumors that there was domestic violence in, within this relationship she, and that's where she ended it, um, on the, the advice of counsel. Now, she probably did it because uh, she was seeking justice, but that would be speculative on my, my behalf. So let's skip forward to the 2018 trial now and talk about that a little bit. And then we'll go back and review both of the trials. And then we will look at uh, um, sloppy um, evidence collection um, in both trials. Uh, how, well, the first trial before then. And then how it was brought up in the second trial. Second trial. It took five weeks for the uh, case to wrap up. Mainly because there was so many eyewitness test, you know, people that were called to the stand in the case and um, so much evidence that had to be go gone through from the first case and the second case. They had to decide what would be admissible in the second case if it was tainted from the first trial or not. Um, a large portion of the, of the evidence from the first case was admissible into the second case. Um, and I, again, I will talk about what wasn't admissible in the second, second case, the second trial. So the 2004 conviction, he was given um, and found guilty of first-degree murder, uh, tampering with a human corpse and disposal of a human corpse, um, and given a life sentence. A anything after first-degree murder, it doesn't matter what you tack on, you're, they're never going to get out because it's life without the possibility of parole in Colorado after you've been convicted of first-degree murder. So, second trial... Um, after a 17 hours of deliberation, the jury came back and they found him guilty of uh, first-degree murder. Um, again, uh, found him guilty of tampering and disposal of a human body. But they also found him guilty of two counts of fraud, forgery, um, by theft by forgery. 
So again, everything after first degree murder, it doesn't really matter because, well, he's going to be serving the rest of his life in prison where he belonged. Because I personally, after reviewing this case, believe that he is guilty. Now, the one thing that has been hanging over this case from the first case and still is to this day is Michael Blagg and Jennifer Blagg's six-year-old daughter, Abby, um, has been missing. She was never found. Um, there's no evidence that of foul play involved in her disappearance. And she just vanished. The night her mother was killed, she just vanished. No one has ever found her. The defense came up um, with a, um, a motion in the first case, and they said that Michael never actually committed the murder. That's why Abby has never been found. And that um, a violent sexual predator who the police uh, um, locally there um, in Grand Junction had been um, already um, under surveillance at one point and knew that he was in the area, um, they said that he killed uh, Jennifer to get to his uh, six-year-old girl. Um, and pl plausible, I guess, but uh, they, you know, the jury in that trial didn't pay much attention to it. They weren't able to really bring it up in trial uh, during the second one. And when they brought it up during the sentencing phase, the judge pretty much told um, Michael Blagg's attorney to just take a seat. I don't want to hear it. Um, and, Mainly because it's procedural. Um, that's not where you bring up evidences and the sentencing after he, he was convicted and then comes the sentencing. So Abby is still listed on the Center for Missing and Exploited Children where she will be um, until she's either found or her body is found, whichever um, comes. So she would be 23 years old to this day. Um, you know, in 2018, she'll be, t she is 23. So, Michael Blank, what evidence was sloppily collected in the, um, before the first trial and evidence that was brought up in the first trial that could not be used in the second trial? Well, um, let's start with the, um, the connection that the DA had used in the first case to connect, um, the murder scene with Michael Blagg and the body of Jennifer in the dumpster. They said that he um, strangled her in her home while she was asleep and beat her and then rolled her up into a carpet and then put her in the minivan and then drove her to um, his near his work and dumped her into a dumpster. But um, And how they connected all that together was because of one single drop of blood in the home and then blood smears on the step going up into the minivan and then on the uh, side of the minivan near the back hatch area. So uh, they said that was the mode of transportation for moving the body from the home to the car, from the car into the dumpster. Now, what um, was interesting that was brought up in the first case that it was kind of brought up but you know brushed over not not as much emphasis on it in the second case was a forensic um, an, uh, specialist who had collected the blood um, samples the first time had contaminated the blood at the home in the van and on the dumpster his DNA was found on the blood and near the blood um, in the first at the home on the blood in the van the smears of blood it wasn't full droplets it was smears and then on the dumpster his um, a partial fingerprint from him and DNA of his was found near the um, the outside of the dumpster I don't know how they got it into into evidence but it obviously didn't weigh too much on the jury because they it was kind of like pass it over um, but I'm sure it, it, it came into um, conversation somewhere during their deliberations so the other thing that wasn't used, um, and um, in the second case, they actually they 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 knew that it, it was illegally obtained, was um, a statement that um, the first DA used, saying that Michael Black had looked at uh, pornography on his computer during um, the night before uh, Jennifer was killed, and Jennifer had a strong um, uh, disdain for any type of pornography. 
um, and they had gotten that information from the family computer and the, that was in the living room. Now, um, it turns out that the, um, the DA statement that uh, pornography had been viewed on the computer was actually incorrect. Um, the AOL um, information that they had given him and how he, per he looked at the dates on that were wrong. Um, it turned out that it was uh, several um, weeks beforehand, and it wasn't even a pornography site. It was an adult, um, like, fan fiction site. So it wasn't even pornography. Um, but someone had used a computer the, the, the day before, and it was to look up recipes. Otherwise, the last time the computer in the living room was used, and it was the only computer in the home, uh, but it was used, um, I think the, it, it said a week prior to that. So it could have been Abby, in a, or it could have been the mom, or it could have been Michael. So, here we are, 17 years later, and he's been convicted again. And he is going back to, he is well, he's back in prison now. He's back uh, serving his uh, um, his life sentence without the possibility of parole. They had moved the trial, the second trial, because of this, you know, the from Grand Junction to another um, city because of the uh, overwhelming um, press coverage that this had received in the 17 years. It was a talk of town. Just about everybody heard about it. And when they sat the second jury, they went through numerous people before they actually found people who they felt could actually um, rule on this case and... Um, come to a um, an opinion a, a verdict without um, using what they had heard you know in the media so he he'd been con he's convicted again and he didn't get the exact same cell he's actually three doors down from where he was um, when he was convicted the first time so but what the the important thing is here is Abby is still missing she would, again, she's 23 years old. Justice has finally been served second time for um, Jennifer and her family, who this had to be a, a, a complete emotional roller coaster to have to sit through the first trial and then watch the, uh, you know, a heir because of, you know, a juror um, in this case, uh, him come back and then the trial go all over again. So, but it happens, I guess. Well, that is the Michael Blagg case from Colorado. I personally, now after five murder cases that I have looked at in the state of Colorado, will not be taking any vacations to the state of Colorado anytime soon. Feel free if you want to. All right, you stay safe out there.